Namaste, welcome, shalom, alikum, shalom, wherever you may be in the world, and uh, greetings. Um, I am Mathura Das, and this is a live share. I think this is my 20th now, uh, broadcasting from the southwest of England. So it's a great pleasure to be here and, and sharing um, my shares um, with, with everybody. It's been a great um, feel very honored and fortunate to be able to um, um, participate in this activity. It seems to be what's happening at, the t at this time during lockdown uh, around the world. People are communicating this way. Um, I'm, I've got a bit of competition with my one of my neighbors today who's thumping out a bit of loud music. I hope it doesn't interrupt uh, too much. The bass is a bit strong, but maybe it's not coming through. <laughs> um, um, anyway, Welcome. Um, um, I, I generally uh, start my um, shares with just a couple of ohms, a uh, few ohms, three ohms, and a chant, and then I carry on my story. Uh, my story is a long, long story, epic story. It's been following my journey uh, and how I ended up with the name Maturidas as a teenager in 1973, how the East and West has come to together over years, um, and it's also... Um, an overview not just of my story but of our generation and also it's now it's become this part of the journey it's a story about my involvement and not just my involvement but generally what was happening in the Krishna movement and how it developed and we've uh, passed Prabhupada's passing uh, we've um, 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 introduced the whole idea of this new regime that has been going on with these new gurus in ISKCON and I've had a confrontation in um, Amsterdam with the leader there, Bhagavan Das, now a Swami, uh, called by many Guru Dave. Um, and um, so anyway, I've ended up, fortunately, just at that moment, there was a, a, a group of devotees who come from India who are on an adventure to take some vehicles overland to India. And that's where my story is going to continue from. So later, so please stay with us for the journey. Okay, I hope it's coming through. Be nice if someone's there to say hi, say that they're there. Okay, I'm going to chant on now. And you can chant with me. A U Um Aum Omkara. Common uh, the, the big you know the basis of all Vedic mantras and uh, also uh, in Buddhism and in Jainism and popular amongst even people like my mother who weren't particularly of any spiritual or religious bent. So Please, it's universal. Thanks, Atma. And let's see how it is now. Om Magana Timirandasya Jananjana Salakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovishtan Shtapitam Yena Bhutale 
Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swabadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Jita Padakamala Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sahakrajatam Sahaguna Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahaguna Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahaguna Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Shcha he Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Shri Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vaja Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Vaja Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vancha kalpa tarubhyas cha kripa sindhu vaiva cha patitanam bhavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha namo vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri mati bhakti vedanta swami niti namine namaste saraswati devi gauravani pracharine nirvisesha shunyavadi paskacha deshatarine Thanks, Atma. Just adjusting, because I just changed the key. <laughs> well, I hope the volume is good now. There's this kind of built-in technology we've discovered with the... Um, when you do live streams, unless you have super, super high quality, I've just got this one microphone here. I'm just going to bring that a little closer. Okay, make sure it's closer to my mouth. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you might notice that my video above you is William and Gemma McCoy. That William is uh, Paramahamsa, who used to be Paramahamsa Swami, and I made the connection. Thank you for joining, and it's so lovely to have so many interesting devotees um, that I have great respect for uh, tuning in. And um, I'm going to do a, a song, but then I'm going to carry on with the story. Um, I'm going to do Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya with a bit of um, Govinda Hari, Gopala Hari, and Ram's join, so that's lovely. Okay. Haribo, Haribo. Please join in. Uh, even though I'm here and we're all wherever we are isolated, we are all together, we're all united. Om 
namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Govinda Hari, Gopala Hari, Govinda Hari, Gopala Hari, Govinda Hari, Gopala Hari, Govinda Hari. Jaya Prabhu Dina Daya Lahari Go in the Hari Go Pala Hari Go in the Hari Go Pala Hari Go in the Hari Go Pala Hari Go in the Jaya Jaya Deva Hari Jaya Jaya Deva Hari Vande Krishna Nanda Kumara Vande Krishna Nanda Kumara Nanda Kumara Madana Gopala Nanda Kumara Madana Gopala Madana Gopala Mohana Rupa Madana Gopala Mohana Rupa Mohana Rupa Jai 
जय जय देव हरि जय जय देव हरि हरि कृष्णा हरि कृष्णा 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 हरि 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 राम हरि Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Jai Deva Hare Jai Jai Deva Hare Jai Jai Deva Hare श्री कृष्ण भगवान की जय हरि बो हरि बो ओके हाय टू एवरीबॉडी हुज़ जस्ट बीन ट्यूनिंग इन आई जस्ट डन अ चांट आई थिंक आई जस्ट डू अ शॉर्ट लिटिल सॉन्ग जस्ट बिफोर just before doing the talk. Um, this is a song that me and Pranaji wrote for the, in the Prana Vallabha in the, in the Bindu Babas. And it's based on the idea of having a conversation with God and God talks back to you. And, um, you know, um, and the idea is called Walk in the Park. When we get stressed out anywhere and we just kind of get out of the place and we unwind and we can go into a meditative space and start talking to God and that's the kind of idea behind this talk, this talk, this song. find time to pray left alone to unwind 
I feel my spirits rise, tingling in my spine. I find as I close my eyes, peace within my own mind. Oh Lord, and I thank you for this day. I know your love is the only way. You hold all the answers in your hand. Please won't you talk to me that I might understand. Ooh, ooh. Why deny my love? I've always been there for you And always will be too Guiding everyone Along the journey home You never walk alone Deep in your heart you'll find me Only the purest love can bind me Deep in your heart you'll find me Only the purest love can bind me You need but surrender Put your trust in me and always remember, your faith will set you free. Do 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 do. Do 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 up a, excuse me <laughs> the prayers I said a, a bit wrong earlier as well excuse me sometimes I just kind of lose where I am but uh, thank you for bearing with me there um, nice lovely to be able to hear you I'm just going to change my um, and I've got the right glasses on okay turn that off okay are you sitting comfortably and then we will meet again um, just a little bit of the recap. I did recap earlier for people just tuning in. Um, I've been on this epic story um, that's been going on for hundreds of years uh, to br bring East and West together, leading to me becoming a devotee, me getting involved in the Krishna movement, leading up to Prabhupada's passing, leading up to um, a new the in, in installation of this new guru regime, uh, having a confrontation with Bhagavan, the new guru in Amsterdam, and uh, which um, 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 coincided, fortunately, uh, with um, um, the arrival in Amsterdam and in Europe of a group from India arranging with Prabhu Vishnu Swami, who was working closely with Jai Pataka Maharaj, the GBC in, um, of Mayapur, Nepal and Bangladesh, in bringing some vehicles overland. 
and um, he'd brought a team of people to collect money. I don't know if that was all the money was coming from there. Uh, and they wanted to get the cars uh, from England because of the left-hand drive, uh, from, the, from the drive, especially because of driving on the left-hand side of the road, I mean. And uh, so um, that's why the cars went there. Uh, Prabhu Vishnu was busy in London uh, at that time. Ravi was there. It was Ravi that had lured me on this journey, really, uh, with the fact that there was... Um, I was in this research at this time um, and going into it deeply to try and find out the links between Gaudiya Vaishnava culture and classical Indian music. Uh, but there was nobody I could find at all um, um, in ISKCON at that time that could answer my question. So I was just kind of going on these, uh, following my intuition, listening to Indian music and developing a taste for different types of ethnic kirtan. And when um, indigenous roots kirtan you could say and Ravi mentioned that in Bangladesh they perform this uh, uh, roots uh, this raga kirtan and so this was one of the great things that attracted me plus the fact that my my friend Chanarari my buddy who I've been traveling in India with and I knew from Amsterdam from early days he was now in Bangladesh and uh, having a very good time so um I got a little bit of money together for the journey. I got a, maybe a little bit of something that Bhagavan had told for Mukta Sangha to give me. Um, basically, after that confrontation, we were gone really quite quickly. We could just, uh, you know, Bhagavan. I was a bit of a, you know, um, it was I was the kind of centre of it because I was a kind of a, I joined the temple. I was really a strong member of the community in Amsterdam, and me kind of going against the grain was kind of disrupting the harmony of the way things were in the Amsterdam temple at that time. And I would never really return back to proper kind of uh, Western um, ashram life. Really, after this, it would be a kind of real breaking point. Um, I'd stretched the boundaries quite a bit already in terms of, if you listen to my last share about my room, the Krishna Katar room, and uh, my delving, uh, not being able to suppress my artistic ind uh, individuality. And as I mentioned in my last share, I'd also gone and met B.G. Sharma, so I had this interest in art, uh, who was a, he was a painter, and in music. So here I am, and we go off... Um, in a couple of the uh, vans, one of the vans or something was ready, and a couple were still coming over from um, from England. And what we were, the plan was, was one of the um, devotees on the in the group was called Pitamba, and his parents were in holiday in the Canary Islands, and their house was free um, in the suburb of Hamburg. Um, uh, Zuldorf, as far, as far as I've uh, I've heard, made out, uh, near Blankenese. And, um, um, or maybe, maybe uh, anyway, I think that's where it was. It was in the suburb of, of, of um, Hamburg. And uh, there was quite a, there was a group of us and there was more people to join the party. Um, um, coming directly, there was Ravi, me, Dhruvanath, uh, Rasika and Pitamba. We were kind of in Amsterdam around there, and we went from there to uh, Hamburg. And I was the cook, of course. I ended up being the cook. I was a good cook, and I, that was my main service. And uh, it was very, it was getting very cold. The winter was becoming freezing. It was much colder than um, than Holland. And what the main tasks that had to be done were before we set off on our manage, uh, a magic adventure overland was to kind of uh, get the vans ready for the journey. And quite a lot of things had to be done. They really had to be turned into the, you know, we were used to this in Europe. This is what we did with vans when we went you know, traveling. Uh, um, they had to, the interiors um, had to be made a platform with movable tops, uh, places for storing things. And uh, we even had a kind of a, a generator, a couple of generators we were taking to India, Honda generators as well. And um, I wasn't part of that, um, uh, That, um, but um, I just spoke to Atma Vidya today and he was coming regularly. He was living in the suburbs. He was helping. It was mostly Ravi, Pitamba and... Um, and it sounds like Atma Vidya was helping or whoever was there. They were all helping together. And they also had to get, um, we were 
a lot of us, most of us, were completely out of touch with the news and not really not not knowing what was going on in the world. But as we were planning all this, the revolution in Iran was kicking off really badly. And we were hearing some kind of reports. Uh, somebody, I think, Darani Dara came over from England um, um, with Prabhavishnu at a certain time. And that's when we started really clicking into the news. Um, somehow or other, I think Ravi, Atmavidi, different devotees were tapping into the news and trying to figure out um, if it was safe. You know, some reports were saying that foreigners were getting killed in Iran. We didn't really know how big it was. Um, basically, um, the, you know, the people were protesting against the rule of the Shah, which is incredibly corrupt and sponsored by the CIA and everything. But not that, that what was going to replace it was going to be specifically better. In fact, could have, could be a lot worse. But that we didn't really know any of those details. Uh, most of us were um, just wanted to get to India. None of us really wanted to be in any, you know, especially the, the, the traveling groups uh, with Prabhavishnu collecting money, that they had already been made not really welcome by Bhagavan. The time was up to leave. Um, my chapter there had finished and many of the devotees most of the devotees who were all joining this party just wanted to get to India and didn't really want to be involved in any ashrams and what was going on in the west so uh, during that period um, I was cooking in, uh, for the devotees this all this activity was going on even a few you know we had even kind of like a little program a few people came there and then the idea was to start heading as we went through December to start heading east, we actually also went via uh, 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 Schloss Retischhof that was in Frankfurt and uh, we picked up um, a Chacha who was there um, and Gorky Shaw may have joined us in Hamburg. Uh, so there was, and then this other devotee came uh, with Prabhu Vishnu from England. He was uh, from America called uh, Chaitanya Chandra. At least he became Chaitanya Chandra. And he was interesting, a chap. He'd been connected with Swami Satchitananda and um, Ramamurti Mishra, as far as I remember. He had a connection, those two different, uh, that uh, person who Prabhupada had a connection with when he first came to New York before starting ISKCON. Anyway, he was he got connected and wanted to come on the journey, and he was there and part of the journey. And Atmavidya had done the trip before. I think there's some buses connected with Hansa Dutta. And um, I'm not sure if Ravi had done it before. Some of the people had done it when they were hippies, like there was Gora Hari. Uh, he'd done it before when he was a hippie going overland. And I think Druvanath had done it as well. They'd all done that maybe in the late 60s, early 70s. So some of them had this experience of going, going overland. And... Well, it had always been a dream of mine ever since reading the book Play Power by ne Richard Neville, the editor of Oz. There was a whole chapter about the journey overland. Um, and um, before all the problems started, you could just jump on these buses at Amsterdam called the Magic Bus and kind of go overland or go via directly to India or via Istanbul, stop there, get another bus. That was all part of the whole kind of uh, our generation, um, uh, the kind of hippie generation that was going to India for spirituality and for some of the, the drugs. You know, a lot of people were going there. Uh, Kabul was famous for hashish and all sorts of things. So was Kathmandu. Uh, that was, it was a, an El Dorado attracting a kind of young people from the West at that time, specifically. And uh, we were all very, very excited and dying to get going. And... Uh, we, we we spent a little bit of time uh, in, in, in the Schloss, a, a day or so, and I went with the uh, Atmavidya to the metro to stock up with things. I can remember getting this gorgeous jam, and we got this gorgeous butter, um, and we had all the basic stuff, dal and rice, and we had some ghee as well for cooking and all the spices, and we had gas stove and pots and plates and all this stuff, and uh, that was all going to be my domain. So I had to make sure that... Um, uh, that we had enough, but we were going to be in these four different vehicles. And that's why we needed quite a lot of uh, uh, um, devotees on this troop, uh, because each van needed a certain amount of devotees to, so that we could kind of keep the driving going as continuous as possible. We wanted to get there as fast as, as possible. Um, I wasn't, a few of us weren't drivers, uh, and, 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 and many of the other people were, so they would change over when somebody became tired so we had a 
a continuous as, as much as possible and we had places to sleep at the back of the van and after we got our stores and everything the first port of call was uh, was vienna and harikesh uh, maharaj who was now the new gbc of germany he was there first time i'd ever really met him and he was quite quirky and eccentric uh, but uh, quite friendly to us all, uh, allowing us to, to stay there. We had, there were some very good kirtans and very nice prashadam, I remember. And I think we spent up to the, from, the, from the new year there. And then we were off on the, uh, to me, there was off into this unknown world. We entered into Hungary. And uh, I remember it was very bleak and very cold. And uh, first sight of the kind of behind the Iron Curtain for, for many of us. And I remember seeing everybody look miserable quite honestly uh, i mean not that in most countries in the snow and the ice they look miserable but it looked really bare i remember we kind of went through one of the towns and in the windows um where in the west they were the windows of a department store they would be with mannequins and fashionable clothing these were literally just filled up with cans of food it just looked really sad to tell you the truth um anyway we, what we did was we um one of the things that Pete Ambar and the chaps got together in Hamburg were all these um, war, war army jerry cans so that we could put fuel in it because we knew we might have problems down the line in Iran if there was a revolution or something. So um, all of these cans were filled up in, uh, in Hungary with uh, cheap fuel. And uh, that's what we did. And then we went down. Um, it was a strange route. We went down. We actually tipped into Greece. And we went down to near Thess Thessaloniki, and I remember we even parked the vans and some devotees jumped into the sea for briefly. And then we went up the coast and came to Istanbul. And we parked outside the Hammam. And the Hammam is the name for a Turkish bath, and these are the famous ones. And I, I remember what intrigued me is just as we were coming and there was a big um, reproduction of an old etching by a European of the Hammams from a couple of hundred years before. And it showed you all these big Turks with moustaches like mine and bigger and with shaved heads, with seekers. And we always assumed before that it was a kind of a Hindu uh, thing, but actually it seemed to be quite popular in different parts of the world, the shaving of the head and keeping a tuft there. Different traditions have different styles, but that intrigued me. Uh, it was an amazing place, the Hammam. It was, you know, I really could have dealt with a massage and stuff like that, but no, that was not to be. We just used it really for the shower facilities. Um, and um, we also went to the big mosque, which was the Hagia Sophia, the old kind of um, had been a converted church. And I remember we, I sat down in there. I was just going to sit down and somebody came up to us and told us we couldn't sit cross legged. We it was un-Islamic. They didn't use that word, but they just told us that we shouldn't do that. We if we were going to sit, we should kneel. And uh, that was that. Very impressive. It was all very quick. We were just kind of really fly by night, a day, uh, kind of uh, tourists. And, um, uh, and then we went over the bridge, the Bosphorus, whatever it's called. I think it's called the Bosphorus. And I remember just as we were going over the bridge, there was a lady, some people by there selling these oranges. And we just jumped out, spent, gave some money and got a whole bunch of oranges. And I have to say, to this day, um, they are the best oranges I've ever ate in my life. They were absolutely sweet and juicy and wonderful. Anyway, we carried on our journey. And um, that was the, the, you know, it was cold, uh, you know, in Turkey. And not so much around this area, but we were going to go, have to go through this mountain range. Uh, and, and we were going to planning to, uh, on, uh, going through Turkey to get to the Iranian border. We were going to go through Ankara. And one of the reasons was that the, uh, it was easy to get a visa for Bangladesh in Ankara. Uh, and, and, and I don't know if other people were getting visas there. Maybe some other people get... In British, we didn't need visas for India, but we did for Bangladesh. And we got to Ankara. On the way to Ankara, I think, was where the mountains were really, really cold. And... Um, I remember, actually, I forgot, we actually did spend a night in Cologne once and I was a bit of a naughty boy. I went into a record shop and um, I bought a cassette. I bought a couple of cassettes, actually. I bought the Jimi Hendrix, The Cry of Love and The Best of Santana. Um, a bit naughty. Uh, you know, I was extending my record collection. But I thought, goodness, we're going to need some music to listen to on the way. And uh, 
Uh, uh, my van had, we had Rasika and we had Gora Hari and me and maybe even Druvena. And we had a nickname for our group. We were called the Internals. Um, don't tell me what that was all about, but it was all about, it was a slightly kind of snobby thing about being kind of a bit slightly naughty and a bit cool and not following the straight and narrow and being a bit, you know, we could listen to music and stuff like that. We did have to do it secretly. I even had John Whit uh, Julian Bream classical guitar and stuff like that. Um, so that was an hour party. All the different parties had different groups. And while we were going through these mountains, I just remember looking out of the window. I mean, I was a partner sitting next to the driver, whoever it was. It was so cold. We had the heaters on. Plus, I had a sleeping bag over me and a coat and I had a hat over my head and it was still quite cold. And outside, we it, the, there was moonlight, I remember. It, maybe not full moon, but you could see it was very, it's like going across the moon and it was icy and you could see all these just barren, icy mountains everywhere. Quite, uh, quite freaky, really. Um, there was not that many vehicles going because it was quite extreme, but we were on this mission to go all kind of strange, you know, during the night. And Pitamba reminded me a, a bit later while I was uh, writing the story a few years back that um, it got to so cold at one point that the uh, diesel fuel began to, uh, to um, freeze. And I think we also, at one point, we had to even put chains on the uh, wheels because it was skidding. And Pitamba told me that we did this thing that I hadn't remembered. Apparently, we took some cardboard boxes that we had and we made, like, can you imagine putting a fire underneath the fuel tank? It's incredibly dangerous. But apparently, that's what we did, at least with, uh, I don't know if we did it with every van, but at least some of the, one of the van, a uh, couple of the vans that were getting frozen up, we lit these fires to get the, the fuel going. My goodness. Goodness knows what would happen if that had gone wrong. But uh, we made it to Ankara. Uh, Ankara we, we was in a lower altitude so it wasn't as cold there and um, went to the embassy and I remember um, buying the best figs I've ever seen and tasted in my life there was a dried fruit shop there and I went off to get some purchases for the for the for the traveling uh, vans and um, I've never seen so many figs in the shop and I just asked them and uh, which was the best and they handed me and they let me taste one and I almost fainted in bliss because of the caramelly kind of taste that it had it was um, you know a, a bit a bit like maple syrup with crunchy it was just unbelievable and I bought a bunch maybe a kilo or so for everybody and we went on our way and then we as we got closer and closer to the uh, Turkish-Iranian border, uh, what was kind of well known uh, for the border was because nearby um, was Mount Ararat. And Mount Ararat um, has some kind of fame because some people claim uh, that's where Noah's Ark ended up on Mount Ararat. Um, I have no idea to verify that story, but it was nearby the border. But there were queues and queues miles long of lorries and vehicles uh, just kind of tailed up from the border and it didn't you know didn't bode very very well I can remember much of most of us our kind of hearts sunk because the last thing that we wanted to do most of us anyway was to not go forward we did not want to be uh, uh, stuck uh, um, in in Europe for the winter in in in, in, in temples and centers that we weren't really happy to be in we were on this adventure and um well it became so we didn't we got, got more knowledge about what was going on in uh, Iran at this time and they weren't letting any vehicles, or if they were letting vehicles, they were letting vehicles that only had very special permits and things. And at the border there, in the room where the officials were, the portraits already have been replaced of um, the Shah. And there were pictures of the Ayatollah. In fact, we were, we were quite well prepared. We would actually got pictures. I think maybe we bought them at the at, at, at the uh, um, um, at the at the border. That we got these pictures of the Ayatollah. But what the uh, Prabhavishna with foresight had got I Irish stickers to cover over the G the British stickers because 
a lot of countries were much more friendly with Ireland than Britain. Britain didn't have a great reputation with many countries, um, especially Iran, because it was aligned with America. So this was all good forethinking. Um, and during this period, um, oh, we had Arma. I forgot to mention Arma. Arma was on our party, uh, eccentric Arma, but uh, he was pr to, 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 to prove to be very, very um, helpful in this part of the story because um, Atma, Atma Vidya and Gorkishore, because they didn't really, they saw that there was a kind of a danger and we had all been, time had been delayed and Atma Vidya had his uh, wife had sent them on to Berkeley and he needed to go back and join them and Gorkishore didn't want to risk it. So they went back. So our parties were less. And we weren't really sure how we were going to if we were going to get through, then Ama had the I Ching with him, which is the ancient Chinese oracle, and um, he said, "Why don't we? Why don't we ask the I Ching?" And he threw the I Ching, and I remember the kind of answer was something like, "In the days of old, the gates to the kingdom were closed, and the travellers could not get through." And we all went, "Oh no." And then he said, but wait, there is a moving line and it's going to change. It's about the book of changes. This is the situation at the moment. It's going to change. So we all kind of waited there and he turned to the next hexagram and it said, and then the gates opened and the, and the, and, and the travellers went through. And we all kind of jumped with joy. We were, And either Prabhu Vishnu was there for that reading or while that was going on, because I remember it was all very synchronistic, he'd been for days trying to talk to the people at the border, please let us through, what is the way we've got to get to India, we've got this, I don't know what story he told them. But he came back all enthusiastic and said, we've made a deal with the border guards and we got to pay them a couple of hundred dollars we got to hire a couple of soldiers who are going to come in plain clothes and basically they just want to make sure we don't sell the vehicles in iran so we were all like incredibly excited i got to cooking <laughs> this famous pot of kitchery and because we all cook, I was cooking in the van with kind of like, you know, faded lights and stuff. I couldn't really sometimes see actually what was, you know, I used to do everything by kind of um, my sight, the cooking. And we had this tomato puree that we'd bought in Germany, which I don't normally use. I normally use fresh tomatoes or tinned tomatoes, but not tomato puree. So I wasn't quite used to it. Anyway, I made this big pot of kitchery because we weren't sure what was going to happen now in Iran. In fact, we had all these ideas because we knew the revolution was kind of going on, but we felt well, somehow or other, whatever, Krishna will protect us and we'll get through it. We even had these description uh, uh, ideas like, well, well, what do we do if we come to a town and there's a bunch of people protesting? And we just said, well, we'll just go down the side street and we'll bypass. And we had some crazy ideas about how we were going to get, uh, think we were going to get through things. And um, so what happened with this kitchery was I just kept, I put too much tomato puree in it and it kind of went almost bright red when you took it out of the light. And devotees uh, in, um, remember it fondly for some strange reason, but we, we actually had, because we didn't have time to stop and do lots of cooking. I had to do it one, you know, one pot on the board and we we're going to eat this as we went through. Um, we, had, we, we calculated we might, we might get through in just a couple of days if we go this special route. So, you know, I think some of us had made friends with some of the lorry drivers and they were kind of like, wow, you know, we were the first ones to kind of go off in this convoy with these two different soldiers in, in civvies and they were not in our van. I don't know. We weren't in the our van. Maybe we were last or third, but we weren't in those first two vans. As we um, came into the border, came into the big the border area of Iran, you could see up on the, you know, on the no north side of this kind of ravine, you could see that uh, these little caves that had been in inhabited, um, most probably ancient times by people, you know, there'd been some dwellings there were up in there, you could see that one. Well, I remember watching that and I think it was a little bit of an anti, we did, where was everybody? There was just, no one was there at this first, I don't know how many kilometers we went in. And then suddenly kind of, we went round and most of the houses were quite, you know, basic. They were just kind of mud and they kind of merged in with the, uh, the landscape. We didn't really see anybody at all. 
and then we came round the corner and suddenly we were just coming into a town and we were, could see all these crowds of people kind of dancing in the street it was like a worse kind of nightmare scenario and I, I have to say that this little period was most probably most probably up till today the most frightening thing I've ever experienced in my life um, as we got there was just no way that we could take this mad idea to just go down some side street we that was it we had to go through this town and we had our picture of Ayatollah Khomeini and we had we hadn't shaved for days we kept our beards deliberately and we all had hats on we just definitely didn't look like Hare Krishnas um, the two, um, as we kind of got cl closer to the cloud, we were kind of slowed down. We were just following all the other vans and, t and the soldiers jumped out of the car and they kind of gently kind of moved the crowd back with their arms in civvies and, and kind of smiling at us, like smiling. We were kind of like smiling, smiling at everybody. And those people glancing up and, uh, and <coughs> in my mind, I was imagining possible pickaxes coming through the big windscreen, us being dragged out, cut to pieces with our blood dripping into the dust of the, you know, my I was literally almost crapping in my pants. It was very, very, uh, I've never felt like that before. And it was a big grin on our faces, you know, and then we kind of like move, as we moved through the crowd, the first kind of van just kind of went zoom, 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 and we just went through it. And we just kind of kept driving and then we got out of the town and then we kind of, as we came around a corner, the other vans had parked well away from, you know, everybody. And as we got out, the other devotees were kind of laughing and we were wondering, what are they laughing about? And then we found out, to our great joy and relief, that what we had just witnessed was a celebration. Because that very day, the 19th of January, 1978, was the uh, 79 sorry it's 1979 was the day that the ayatollah khomeini returned back to iran from um, um being in uh, what's that word um okay. anyway he was in paris he had been in france and he just returned back and so everybody was celebrating they weren't in an angry mood at all and what a relief that was. The timing, everything in life is about timing, isn't it? It really, um, this was just so fortunate just at that time. So then then our plan was to head towards Tehran by, and then kind of like bypass it and then go up to the Caspian Sea. That was the route. So we drove and we drove and we drove. And then uh, and eventually we got around Tehran it was unbelievable um, um, traffic jams and it was uh, 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 and people were just all celebrating and everywhere and we could, as we were stuck in the traffic jam, our vans a bit were quite covered with dust we could kind of feel people kind of writing things on the van and people were coming up to the windows going oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know we were trying to smile and everything and then as we got further up though the vans had waited for us on a, on a place where to get off They'd made some kind of mistake. They should have gone off earlier, but we went up. Anyway, we bypassed the rest of the Tehran, headed up to the Caspian Sea. It was really quite easy, this route. Then we got to the Caspian Sea, and it was quite beautiful. There was orange trees. We could see the sea. There was a road. It was quite calm. You could see that the revolution... There was not kind of any rowdy revolutionary stuff going on up in this part of Iran at this time. And so we carried on and we carried on. We bypassed Mashhad and it was just around Mashhad that the uh, soldiers said goodbye and they left us because we, they'd done their business. We, we were on, they could see that we were on our way um, and they must we had to report back. And then it was uh, getting towards... Um, afternoon most probably when we got to the Iranian side of the Iranian Afghani border and when we got there actually in the last few kilometers coming towards that border the, the people were very traditional Iranians with uh, big turbans on and long gowns and you could say green was is such a prominent color in that part of the world and they they were as we went by they were going Shout, waving them quite angrily their fists at us and we were going I wonder why they're all angry with us you know what we what we done basically and um, then we got to the Iranian border 
and it was super modern, super efficient, very different to the other border as well uh, on the Turkish side, and it was smaller, and there was a very officious uh, policeman in a very dark black, very smart uniform, and he came out. And, you know, we were, Pramavishnu was, you know, to, 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 uh, I think he went into the office and he came out and saw us there with the four vans. And he freaked because all over the vans in um, Persian were slogans uh, that, um, you know, were against the Shah, death to the Shah, the Shah is a pig or whatever it said. Anyway, he just freaked out and he said, you clean immediately i could arrest you put you in for this you know terrible offense you know we all freaked out we got our buckets and we got water and we cleaned all the vans very quickly and, and while all the official uh, what you need for these journeys uh, are these things called carnets and that took a long t that's what Prabhu Vishnu spent quite a lot of time in england getting these carny special kind of um, international passes to take the vehicle through one border after another so while he was dealing with all that we were just checking out the rest of the border and they had a museum that was dedicated to um, all the different things that they uh, have uh, uh, kind of uh, items that they have busted that have been used for smuggling uh, mostly i think from foreign hippies and to, you know people and it showed you chess boards uh, and, and rucksacks where people had put hash inside the framework and it was all just to make anybody really paranoid and don't you know don't you come through here with your naughty smuggling business you know um anyway that was finished and then there was this kind of no man's land for a few miles going to afghanistan and talk about yin and yang black i mean talk about difference and you have to remember this is shortly this is before the russians came in okay the russians hadn't come into afghanistan yet we came to the border and it was just closed they just closed it just a bit before we just kind of missed it and the guy came out with one of the afghani hats big moustache creased eyes you could see the guy was stoned out of his head and you know they were like almost like hey man hi they weren't quite hippies but they had that kind of attitude and they just said don't worry just chill out the borders closed now officially we'll do all the papers in the morning just park your vans everything's correct and cool and just you can go into the town and the, the, well it wasn't really a town it was just a border village and um wow that was a kind of a big shift just going from there to there it was incredible when you go when you jump on a plane and you go leave from london and arrive in india you miss all this that's one of the great things about going overland. I'd also been observing and watching out for, um, you know, Western cows don't have these big humps on the back. They're very different kind of breed. And then in India, you go, the cows have all got these different humps. They're a different type of cow. And I noticed in Iran, as we were going towards um, the, the humps, started to come in certain the cows in iran they did i noticed that and also noticing the varieties of bread that uh you know because they use tandoori breads various forms of none we stopped in the caspian sea I, that was a wonderful break we uh, after eating all that kitchery and kitchen we got to the caspian sea chilled out and had these hot nuns that we smothered in this gorgeous german butter this strawberry jam that we'd bought in hamburg and we all relished that that was great and um, I think I had to cook again at the at the border that night. But when we um, I, I kind of went into one little kind of chai shoppy type thing. I can't remember what for, maybe to get some milk or something. And there was a kind of a big fire in the middle of this hut. And there's these guys that look kind of Middle East, uh, you know, Central Asian with turbans. They had slarty eyes. People were smoking hookers. They were mostly smoking hash. And there was that music of the rubbub. A bit like the Bengali dotra. It's kind of a cross between a folk dotra and a sarod. Very typically Afghani. And everybody just looked really chilled out. Everybody looked really laid back. And that was just all I really saw of that border town. Next morning we were off. And we stopped in Herat, and Herat was very pretty, and they had all these horses uh, and horse and carts like they have in India, and we called them tongas there. All they had these like bright plumes, and we had there was a place we stopped, and we had our first shower. We just stopped at a hotel. I didn't, we didn't stop for the night. I don't think we just stopped for a few hours. We paid one. We said we'll pay you some money. We can just 
take your showers. And while we were there, we did a little bit of kirtan in the street, all in our civvies. And a few little people came around. I remember Dharani Dara. I remember a few of us there doing the kirtan just for a little bit. And then we arrived in Kabul. It's quite a long way. Uh, you have to go um, um, and Herat, Kandahar, I think, and then you go up again to Kabul. So we drove a long way. And we got to Kabul in the um, uh, in the evening, I remember. It was, um, or at least early, uh, just before the night got dark. And, and our plan, we checked out a few places. And I've, for years and years and years, I have been out of the hippie scene. But my goodness, some of the hotels we've seen, you just walked in there, it was just like thick clouds of hashish and you know people playing you know crosby stills and nash the music coming over people sitting on sofas it was like it was a hippie el dorado and everyone was you know was, you could tell this is where there was a big scene going on in 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 uh in kabul but we didn't stop there we decided to sleep in our vans and decided to leave very very early in the morning i think we went down chicken street checked it all out and when you see photographs later after the Russians have been there and after the Taliban and everybody and you see what's happened to to Kabul, it's so sad because it was such a uh, an attractive, um, interesting uh, city and town with lots of history and an atmosphere. That all has gone and I really feel for the people of Kabul what they've gone through over the years. I mean, for centuries actually. I've read the book about the British and what a karma that city and the country has had. My goodness. Okay, so in the morning, we, um, it, well, we only slept a couple of hours. We slept, we got up really, really early. We left before dawn. I remember winding out of Kabul. It was still dark. And we were heading towards the famous Khyber Pass. I mean, most people have heard of the Khyber Pass in English anyway through the Carry On film, Carry On Up the Khyber, with all the great British comedians in it. Um, and you you automatically think of white hats and red coats and people with turbans and, and Gunga Din and names like that. Um, and uh, when we came, as we were coming to the actual kind of border of Afghanistan and Pakistan, there is a, a no man's land again. There's going to be... People were coming up to the van with lumps of hashish. They said, do you want bazooka? We can get you tank. We can get, what do you want? Opium, hash, you know. And we were like, no, Hare Krishna, you know. And, <coughs> and then we got to the border. And what was it, you know, they were very friendly. The, uh, the, 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 the you know, went, left the Afghanistan, went to the Pakistani border to, uh, to go to, into Pakistan. And, um, when we told them we were going to India, they made all these snidey remarks. Why do you want to go to India? There's all these beggars everywhere. People are suffering. It's such a poor country, you know. And we, we just kind of nodded our heads. And, and we I don't think we argued with them. We didn't want to have any problems at the borders. Um, they stamped everything, did the carnets. And then we did this. And I'll never forget it, coming down the Khyber Pass in the morning. It's incredible. Um, you suddenly realise this is what um, Alexander the Great and many of the other people who've conquered India, they've come across and they've entered into India. Are you, OK, we're calling it Pakistan, but this is India, over this border. And it's, uh, uh, we've been actually, all this journey that we've been on really, Turkey, Iran, up to here, all we'd seen in that middle part was a kind of barrenness. It was something for the all you we want you'd want to do is just like drive through. What would you want to hang out there in all of this kind of barren terrain for? And also when you go over in a plane and you're leaving, it's just mountains and mountains of kind of barren. It looks like it's it looks very, very austere and stark. But then when you get to the Kyber Pass, the kind of I noticed that the kind of the rocks and the and, 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 and the, uh, the geology of the place changes and the sun was just kind of coming and shining as we came down with our vans down this road down this road winding 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 down 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 and then suddenly you get to a point when you get down and you can see it's like the promised land the land of milk and honey you know you can imagine like the tribes of israel traveling and they see this land and you can see that's what people who saw you suddenly see down below green green lushness spreading out right in the valley going down anyway we went down and the first town that you come to the big border town in pakistan is peshawar and we spent the night in peshawar 
and um, it was a bit funny because Gora Hurry had been there as a hippie and he remembered and he was a bit he wanted to you know he'd been you know he was wanted to nip off and have a break from all of it and we think we never uh, he had never admitted it at the time but he we think he went off and had a bit of a toke on some ash because he came back and he was all kind of like this and um anyway we carried on literally um we were in a race to get to india and we zoomed across the next morning across the north of um in, uh, through that uh, to lahore via lahore and we did it all in, and we got to the Amritsar border, which is not far. Uh, uh, well, it's not actually Amritsar's just inside of India, but it's quite close there. Lahore's not far. And uh, it was very interesting to see Pakistan because um, it was um, quite tidy. And it was like India, but not India, because they developed their own cultural traits. People were much more lighter skinned. We know, I notice Afghanistan and, and that part, part of uh, um, um, of Pakistan, people almost have ruddy complexions and rosy cheeks. They had different kind of complexions than, than the general Indians. And the buses were fantastic and the lorries, they were very, very colourful and psychedelic. And I, I wonder why Indian people haven't got round to making their buses and, and lorries as colourful, <coughs> excuse me, as they um, did in Pakistan. And, and then we crossed in and before uh, uh, the, uh, we, a funny similar thing happened. We got to the Indian border. It was too late. It was closed. So we had to park our vehicles there, spend the night there and the next morning go across. They were OK with parking our vehicles there. And this, a similar funny thing was we told them we'd come from Pakistan and come to India. And, we, and they were like, oh, my God, I bet you're glad coming arriving to India. And we were. We actually, I think that next morning, but when we crossed the border, we actually, we either did it before or immediately as soon as we crossed the border, we took off our civvies, our kami clothes, and we put on with pride our dhotis and our kurtas, and we put on tilak, and we went to have darshan at the Golden Temple. Oh my goodness, it was a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful way to come after that journey and come into India and, 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 and get quite emotional about this place that I've become, you know, very, very attached to, even though I wasn't born there. Um, the Golden Temple, um, if anybody hasn't been there, I highly recommend it. Prabhupada was very impressed. It's a very, it's the headquarters of the whole Sikh religion. And it's very beautiful, very calm. And we went there, did our circumambulation, had a, a kind of darshan of the Guru Grant. And then we carried on our way. Uh, we're heading down towards Delhi. We stopped off in Kurukshetra. Uh, saw Kurukshetra, the place where Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita. And then we arrived down in, in, in Delhi. And we'd all grown hair and beards and everything you know or, or you know we, we looked a bit uncouth and Prabhu Vishnu kind of got on everyone's case you need to get kind of get your hair trimmed and, and make sure you shave and everything we were going to Bangladesh so we didn't have to cut our hair because we were going to be incognito in Bangladesh so Rasika and me were fine and um we were on this journey going going across uh, I think we would, we took all of the I don't think we left any of the vans in Delhi. I'm not quite sure about this. Maybe Ravi and uh, will be able to remind me later. I know that at least two of the vans, because two of the vans were for India. One was for Nepal and one was for Bangladesh. I don't know if we took all the four vehicles of all of who was left in the group went on this way or two stayed there. Um, we um, went to Varanasi and uh, Gora Hari, before he'd been... Uh, um, joined ISKCON he'd been a bit of a bubba and he'd met these and hung out with these really nice bubbers who'd lived outside Varanasi and we decided to spend the night there um, and when they saw him they were so overjoyed to see him Graham Graham Baba uh, and uh, the, the, the head of it was called Master Baba who spoke rather good English and un unusually they were followers of Saraswati and uh, we went to have darshan and they had this ritual where they smoked these chillums. They really smoked these chillums and they passed them all around. They were all quite old. Uh, there was nobody under 50, definitely. And um, and then they did this chanting of Om. I'll never forget it. They went, Om, Om, Om. 
and they went back and down, up and down like this. Never heard anything like that before. And then they chanted this song, and I remember the tune. Jayom Saraswati, Jayom Saraswati, Jayom. Lovely tune. And then there was a Baba there, very old Baba, who played um, 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 Esaraj. Uh, not Esaraj, yeah, Sarangi, a folk one over his shoulder. And he was dancing around. It was lovely. And then we did a kirtan and Rabbi, Rabbi led a really nice kirtan. It's a lovely, lovely uh, mood. It was such an idyllic ashram. I mean, if you when you think about Sadhu's ashrams, this one of the most beautiful I, 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 I'd ever been to. They'd done all this kind of landscaping, made little ponds there. It was very decorative little gardens. The, the local people used to come to the temple. The Baba for, had been teaching English at the local school there. Um, and there was it was right there was nobody around really hardly anybody in this beautiful beach going down to the Ganga sandy it was lovely it was just wonderful and then we went, popped into Varanasi and we also went into we also went to Naimisharanya as far as I remember all on the way this was all part of our route in that part of the world we didn't spend long in Varanasi um the, actually when we parked our cars there was this we just suddenly happened to go out and there was this Gaudiya Goswami with long grey hair and beard with Gaudiya Tilak dancing in the square just near the Dash Ashwamedha got going Huriwo God is love God is love and um, he was wonderful a uh, gentleman he saw us Hari Krishna he was just wonderful can't remember much but Pitamba once said he went back to Varanasi and met him and he said that he this chap was an old had been an old school buddy a Prabhupada when they were children you never know. It was that was wonderful, but uh, we didn't spend long. We were on a mission to get to, to get to Mayapur and to get where these vans were going. So then uh, we arrived in Mayapur, and um, and then it was this plan where um, oh yes, me and Prabhu Vishnu decided we were going to fly, and Ravi was going to drive the van uh, because they didn't want it to be too suspicious because he was taking a. Um, generator and all these books that were coming we were smuggling from west bengal into muslim bangladesh and um i even went over to the the the, the barbers in navadweep to um have a and get cut my seeker it's the first time i cut my seeker we had to kind of this was our thing we had to be very incognito that was part of the deal of going to bangladesh and so i remember going there and when I, he was he said why I said, I'm going to Bangladesh and we're going to spread the message of Mahaprabhu and give books to the Hindu Vaishnavas there. And so I and he was very, very respectful and he cut it off very neatly, gave it to me and wrapped it in paper. He said, please put in Mother Ganga when you cross back to Mayapur, you know. So I always remember that. That was a big thing for me. And we went, uh, me and Prabhu Vishnu went in our civvies and we flew. Literally, you take off from Calcutta and you land. It just goes, zoom, zoom. it takes about half an hour, Calcutta to Dhaka. It's not very far at all, if you look on the map. And when we got to um, Dhaka, Vyasaki was there. And, uh, and Chanarari had been out that evening at a place called Narayan Ganj, just a Hindu area. And he came back and we met up after a long, long time. And we had this lovely subjis and we had imported lurpak butter. I remember kind of melted on, on the vegetables that uh, Vyasaki had got. Um, was Ilapati there? I don't think he was there at that time. There was maybe a couple of Bengalis. There was a Vyasaki and... Um, so what we were going to do was, the plan was, this was, we were just going to spend it, now, this was like the beginning of, um, um, because we'd set up, that, that Iran, I remember that date, that's 19th of January, so we're getting into the end of February, and we were just going to spend a little bit of time in uh, Bangladesh, go back to Mayapur for the festival, and then come back to Bangladesh because that was what I had come to be specifically to travel in Bangladesh. That was my thing. But apparently when we got there and when Chanarari arrived back, he told me the bad news that um, he didn't want to stay anymore in Bangladesh. He loved it. <laughs> But Biasaki was the leader and they had a personality clash. They were just not getting on. Uh, well, it's Chanarari uh, uh, um, had a thing about Biasaki and he just did not want to stay there any longer. 
So I was a bit, oh my God, I've come all the way over to meet my friend Chanarari and he's going. But I just thought, oh, there, what what to do? Um, and um, so we had a really nice time. Uh, we travelled, specifically we went down to Chittagong. And, uh, and Vyasaki uh, um, um, took us to this amazing Marawari Bojanalai in the old part of Chittagong where the Hindus were. And it was fantastic. They, um, um, you, know, you sat there and they threw all these chapatis down and it was wonderful to have all this incredible cooking um, after all that kind of quite austere travel and my, getting bored of my kitchery and all of this kind of stuff. And, and then we went, we met a gentleman in Chittagong who was a professor and he invited us to come to his village. And that was the first time I really went into a village in Bangladesh and we spent, oh my goodness, this is where I started to fall. This is what I've been looking for. This was the place where you see it around Mayapur, but I, you know, when I've been there, it was always around Iskon and the devotees. And now I was out of all of that. And we were in, uh, in, in this village and everywhere in Bengal, they had these pukors, these beautiful ponds. So as soon as we got there, we were taken to this pond and there's all these laughing children and people. And you go with your gumshoe and you take a lovely swim in this, like it's, it's like a, a kind of natural swimming pool. And they have separate ones, generally ones for washing clothes, ones for swimming in. And um, while we, you know, when we came back from our bath to the kind of the house because he was quite a, a, an important chap in the village and he had quite a big house and they all have these beautiful big verandas and a courtyard when we kind of come back they they cleared out the, the the area the the courtyard and there was these mattings put down and there were these lovely Vaishnavas there sitting there and they um, this is what I was going to experience on my journey in Bangladesh was what I, I kind of call it's the mutual mind-blowing scenario where we are coming into this villages where they've been worshipping Mahaprabhu for hundreds of years. It's been their tradition. It's, it, it is. These places are the most pristine areas of uh, the tradition of Gaudiya Vaishnavism that actually exist in East and West Bengal and specifically in East Bengal. And we sat down there and we were looking at them and they were looking at us and we were all, it was very emotional uh, uh, and, 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 and uh, they were maids that we were foreigners that had, when you would, they would, they couldn't get their head around that London, the head of the British Raj, there was these people like us coming from there who were followers of their religion, Mahaprabhu, because they were surrounded in an Islamic culture and every, all the time they were being told, oh, your religion is just, not, Islam is taking over the world. And now there were these people like me coming from London, you know, and we and, and, and they did their kirtan, their traditional kirtan. Some of the tunes that we could recognize, some of the songs from Narutam Das, all the traditional tunes and the Hare Krishna kirtan. This is, wasn't professional kirtaniers, this was the local village. And I was, I fell in love immediately with the whole culture and the people. But we also heard some awful things. We'd heard about, because uh, I was a little bit blank on history, but this is where we got educated about what had happened in Bangladesh uh, with the Bangladeshi war that culminated in 1971 when the Indian army came in. And um, that Pakistani, West Pakistan, uh, from uh, had, they were causing devastation because East Pakistan that was going to become Bangladesh, East Bengal. They um, didn't want to be. All the money was being taken out of uh, siphoned out of there to the West Bengal, and they wanted them to speak Urdu. And they were not having any of this. And uh, was his name Zia Rahman. He was the leader of the freedom movement. And my friend Himongshu Goswami was part of that whole movement, the freedom movement. And we heard in that village where we went remote, how people had told us that there's tanks and things and, and the army, Pakistani army, they were retreating towards the Chittagong uh, docks to get onto their boats to go back to Pakistan. And as they went, they just went out of their way and murdered and butchered thousands and thousands of innocent people, not just Hindus, Muslims, everybody, Bangladeshis, everybody. And that was very heart wrenching to, to hear that because they're the most soft, beautiful people. And to hear all this suffering that they've gone through and are still, as we speak, um, in a different way from slightly different reasons but and then we went to um, um, there's a uh, it, there's some Hindu um, holy places in Bangladesh which are kind of ancient uh, Shakti pit um, that we went to um, Shitakund 
that was there. There's the Rangamati hill tribes that go between kind of Bangladesh down there and Burma, and nearby there is the place called Shitakund. And it's considered one of the great Shakti pits. Uh, we were a little bit disappointed because uh, this is the first time when we'd seen lots of buffaloes and things being kind of taken for slaughter. And that really didn't really turn us on. It wasn't the part of Hinduism that really attracted us at all. And so we just didn't, didn't hang around. We didn't really want to get involved in what was ever going on because there was a festival going on at that time. Lots and lots and lots of people. Uh, the centre, there was a temple. There was you know, typical Hindu places with roads, the people selling knickknacks and stuff. But not like in India. And, and also you don't see that in, in Bangladesh at all. There's very few kind of Hindu places like that. So we stayed there and then we went to Mayapur and Chanarari had decided that he was leaving and we went in that van uh, we went through with a friend called Pijush who later went to America who was a friend and good good kirtan singer he hadn't wasn't a part of Iskon yet and uh, and we came back to um, uh, Mayapur for the festival and it was actually in Mayapur uh, that I actually saw for the first time my first kind of Nam kirtan uh, a group uh, uh, you know I didn't really see, I, but what I'd seen in Bangladesh so far was traditional Vaishnavas doing bhajans but I hadn't really heard this Raga Kirtan full on yet but a lot of the people refugees who had left Bangladesh and come over to West Bengal many come to Navadweep and th this uh, pr type of Kirtan uh, uh, n and th th that was involved they used to have what's called Nam Yagyas and Yagya is a sacrifice but it was they would have um, um, different kirtan groups, which involved maybe nine to ten people in, uh, you know, in a group. Uh, singers, harmonium players, mridanga players, cartel players, maybe flute players, violin players, and the singers. And the idea is that it's performed like Bengali theatre called yatra, where instead of having a stage, the people surround around and the performers are in the middle. And they gradually turn around and greet the audience but I wouldn't see this until I actually went to Navadweep and Chanarari had met lots of people in Bangladesh while he was there who had kind of connections with Navadweep he'd really broadened out had a most incredible time the stories he told me he'd been traveling off in villages by himself uh, and and the, the devotion of the people and the hospitality um, and, 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 and to this day I think he would say it's most probably the best time he ever had in his life traveling around and so we had these kind of like interests with Navadweep and so we left what was going on in the ISKCON thing and we went over there to check it out and we kind of got to the center of uh, the Paramatala in Navadweep and we could hear this kirtan happening from the north side and so we just went and kept following it and following it and following it turned the road and there was this temple with the speaker outside and we went in and there was loads and loads of people and we were the only foreigners and when we walked in they looked at us because generally foreigners don't go to these events but they were very kind and of course as they saw us were foreigners they said calm down and come down to the front and i didn't really know exactly what to expect because i'd never been to one of these so on one side was the little the small temple and on all the different sides people were sitting around and there was this group and were they good this group my goodness um, uh, they were just so incredibly dynamic immediately I got lost in this we didn't come from the very very beginning part what happens is each group does a raga for the maha mantra for two hours and then another group comes in takes over and then it can and it continues and according to the nature of the nam yaga it could be one day two days three days even a week and they will have a, 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 and then they will have prashad and distribution for the guests and the the prime time in the uh, is 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 basically the evening because people are all kind of working, doing their things. They don't have time to attend the kirtans all day long. So, prime time evening arti is when the big masses of people come. And um, wow, the leader of the group, he was incredible. We all have the kirtaniers all have their hair tied back, and they have like beautiful tilak on, and they normally wear a kind of tight vest, and they wear um, a cloth around their waist. And, uh, and one over their shoulder, and it's very dramatic. It's a bit like a kind of opera reenacting the Maha Mantra. And basically what happens is, and I've talked about this with people, when you hear, read the pastimes of Mahaprabhu in Navadweep, when he started the Sankata movement, they would have these kirtans, ecstatic kirtans in the house of Srivas. 
And what they are trying to do in their, because they are very simple, most of these people, they are village farmers. They're not um, sophisticated city uh, types. Uh, this is not Podavoli Kirtan as well as complex. It's just the Maha Mantra. Very, very good technical playing, but it's easier to perform than Podavoli Kirtan, where you need to know lots of elaborate poetry and many different styles of playing Redanga and different styles of singing. Uh, so all the kirtan, I remember one of the Mridanga players had a beard and they're putting 110% energy into it. They're sweating, the veins are sticking out. The cartel players are doing all these different things. And then they will suddenly take out the tempo and then slow down. And then they get down on their knees, and this was this was. Uh, then they will come to me. I was I'd be in the front row, and I was just watching what was going on, and what and, you know, I I wanted just kind of like to kind of um, merge with the vibe and the scene, really, and 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 and, and it, they were singing, sitting and watching me, uh, uh, coming towards me and singing with their arms out, and the groups were coming with the violin and the mandang, and it was taking that, and then they come and they come to embrace you. What am I going to sit there with a stiff upper lip and go? No. So I embrace them and they're emotional and they're kind of in a kind of theatrical acting mood and they're kind of weeping and I was kind of slapping him on the back gently going join it I join it I I was getting totally into it. I, we stayed anyway me and me and Chanarari for uh, maybe that group and another group it goes on it goes on and another group came in the other group was good but that first group was fantastic. So that was my initiation into the Nam Yagas, and I was going to see quite a lot more of those over over the years. Um, but some of those initial ones I saw there in Navadweep were fantastic. The next day, Druvanath had wondered where we had gone, and he wanted to check out where we had been, and we brought him there, but it actually it was too much for him. He couldn't handle it. It was too much for many, many foreigners. It's just a bit too over the top, too emotional. And of course, I can't listen to that all of the time, that style of kirtan. But sometimes when it's cooking, it's really, 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 really some of the best kirtan in the world. And um, so then it was time to go back to Bangladesh. And this time um, um, I was going to go in a vehicle across the border. The border is at a place called Haridaspur, uh, Benapol, which is not far from the border of uh, 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 from Calcutta and from Mayapur, very, very close. And it's the famous, it's called Haridaspur because it's the place where Haridas Thakur had lived and done Japa and the famous story where he'd been tempted by a prostitute there. It's called, it's still, it's called Haridaspur to this site, uh, to this day. And, and there was the border. And so we had these vehicles, this vehicle, actually one vehicle, with the um, with lots and lots of books and things in, and we were hoping we were going to get through it. And there was this very endearing um, exchange that happened where uh, the border guard uh, was so nice, we got a van, we were in our plain clothes, and we, uh, we were not telling him we were Hare Krishna missionaries at all, that's not what we were doing. And... Um, as he went to kind of stamp our passports, he looked at his the ink, uh, the, 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 the pad, where he was going to put the, 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 the stamp in, and it was totally dried out. So I'll never forget, he went like this. He went off his brow, took some sweat and flicked it, into, and he said, I am sorry. Bangladesh, we are a very poor country. <laughs> and I remember him stamping it there and giving us this very faint press uh, on, on, on our passports. And it was what a, what a sweet little exchange. I mean, and I, I have to say, another time I went to a Bangladeshi, I went to get my Bangladesh visa in London. And when I went there, there was nobody there, not like the Indian um, consulate with hundreds of people rushing to get... And, and, and when I went there to get my visa, the, the, the humble gentleman there said, excuse me, sir, can I ask you one question? I said, please. He says, why do you want to come to our country? <laughs> and when I told him, because I'd been, you know, I said, actually, do you know what? Bangladesh is the most beautiful place I've ever been on earth. The people are the most friendly. I've had my best experiences in my life. And he went, oh, my goodness, thank you, sir. He was not expecting me to say that uh, because... 
I found that again and again and again. Here I was coming from England and, and just wanting to be in a kind of a village with palm trees, mud huts, uh, a, a, a very simple life. And the, the goal of people from those villages to come to London, you know, and, and make a fortune and a future for themselves. But, you know, in those days, especially generally what would happen is you would end up coming to London, staying with some other person from Bangladesh and becoming a pot washer in one of the Indian restaurants. That was going to be, you're going to leave all that for that and live in some kind of crowded flat in the East End. But anyway, that's life. That's the kind of incongruity of, uh, of, of life. You know, the grass is always greener on the other side. And um, I think I've talked enough now and I'm going to kind of like uh, uh, carry on tomorrow with the journey that happened next and the amazing experiences I was going to have on this leg of my journey in Bangladesh because um, I would meet some people there that would completely um, blow my mind. In, 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 they, they were like characters out of the Chaitanya Charitamrita and the stark contrast of this whole experience compared with this kind of if you'd heard my uh, share yesterday, the, the you know the confrontation I'd just been through in Europe with 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 Bhagavan, and uh, and 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 suddenly and then the t tension of going through overland to India, and almost not getting there, getting there just at the right time in the in in the seasons, and then suddenly arriving in Bangladesh, at this time was going to be something that would fuel my soul. Uh, for many years to come and maybe up till to now. I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't seen, uh, experienced what Gaudiya Vaishnavism could be like or was like in its indigenous roots. Uh, and, and free, not just from Iskon, but Gaudiya Math as well. Although we met a few Gaudiya Math people, this was how Gaudiya Vaishnavism had been existing over hundreds of years. And then how it had been passed on traditionally, how was it, it was expressed. And I was, it was a very important thing for me to go there. And so anyway, thank you so much for uh, kind of um, listening to this part of the journey. Um, um, it was a very exciting time, uh, like I said, and the contrast from going from that tension in Amsterdam to this was just unreal. And um, I will carry on tomorrow. And um, I'm not going to sing any more songs today. I've sung enough. Um, thank you all again for tuning in and allowing me to share this story with you and i will um, explain to you tomorrow a bit more about how absolutely amazing and the experience i had in bangladesh in the next couple of months was going to be and um, wherever you are whatever you're going through whatever life is throwing you and i keep saying it every day life does change on a day-to-day -day basis and we just never know what we're going to face or what we're going to experience uh, because everything around us at the world is very very peculiar and um, I just pray that we all, you all kind of stay happy and healthy and safe and not get too bewildered or let the negative energies that are floating around um, 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 smother you and, 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 and get in the way of just your, you know, um, um, experiencing your blissful self. Hari Om. Um, if I am going to carry on, I don't think tomorrow, but maybe... Um, on Saturday, Saturday or Sunday, I'll let you know when I'm carrying on. Hari Om, Hari Om.